Hey guys, welcome back to Part Out where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Today we have what I think is a Jeep Wrangler. It's a Jeep truck. It's half Ford, half Chevy, half Dodge, half Jeep. I um, like that math. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah. And got Ace Engineer and Stinger Bumper, uh, one of their first models. Got 04 Super Duty front axle, 45 inch Interco um, Super Swamper TSL 2s. They're excellent. They grip the rocks great. I'm 6'3", if you want a reference. They're pretty tall. That's pretty They're tall. They're a lot bigger than the 40s. <laughs> Ace Engineer and four door rock sliders. I can't really see them. They're, they're under there. Yeah, they're. they're a little chopped up and beat up, but you know. Custom made long arms. They're about just over four feet long. They get the job done. Fox factory racing two and a half inch coilovers. Dual adjusters. Haven't used them yet, but I can't wait to test it out more and you know, set them right. There's a bet on this Jeep. What, uh, what motivated you to chop up your own Jeep and decide to do this? Honestly, when I got the Jeep five years ago, I was looking at some inspiration builds and two really stuck out to me. Um, one was a way of life Jeep that had mud flaps and forties. And that's why I had the forties last year and everything. And, uh, the, the rattle trap, which was the truck build as well for a Jeep. And I said, you know, I want to do that. And five years later, here we are. Sweet. So, I wanted to put my own spin on it, which is why I had my buddy, Chris Hatter actually build the bed. He's got a 60 inch brake press, plasma cutter, everything. So that dude's just super handy. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> we went over there for four days straight, worked on it. Fourth of July. Uh, excellent. He did a great job. If you have friends that are fabricators, be extra nice to them. Cause you never know what you're going to need from them down the road. Oh, I mean, I asked for a bed and he ended up making me these rear corner panels that look stock. So I was very pleased with that. Now I'm curious because I had spoken with you a little bit ago and then all of a sudden this just happened. How long did this take and like when did you like start chopping things up? Because this was not like this very not too long ago. Well, my girlfriend and I got home from college around, I think it was like May 5th, the first week of May. And within that week, we were cutting tub, cutting hard top, just going at it. We finished it up. It's not even finished yet, but. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> Last thing that we put incredible. in was the, the drive shaft on uh, Wednesday night and drove it around the yard once. You know, everything seemed okay. Like six to eight weeks? Yeah, roughly. Just it was two and a half <laughs> months of just, uh, work all day, head over to my parents, work on it with my dad. Um, my dad and I did everything. The whole stretch, we added two feet of frame. But yeah, it was a lot of hours put into this. Well, let's come around to the backside. So my, the one thing I really had to have for this Jeep was A, a tailgate on the bed. Wanted it to drop down and I needed it to say the Jeep's name, Daisy. Daisy the Diesel. Daisy the Diesel. So this is actually probably one of my favorite parts. It's a little hard sometimes. Full working drop down tailgate. I put the cooler on it. We ate lunch on this. Behind the Yeti cooler, we got a fuel cell from Summon Racing. Nice. Um, had to have that. The, using the stock fuel tank was not working out anymore. I heard you roll in. Didn't sound like a 3.8 liter V6. No, not no. a chance. That was not enough power, let me tell you. <laughs> Let's go around to the front. There's something else we got to see. This is probably my favorite part. It's got the Cummins 4BT. Straight out of a Frito-Lay bread truck. Hence the name and why most of us pick on you for running bread. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> like, like I told guy. you on Friday, the deliveries were picking up, so we had yeah, a, so you, uh, the bed. I, yep, that makes sense. It all is adding together, all these halves. <sighs> now what do we talk about? I don't know. She's just looking at us in disgust right now. I said talk about G-Ben. So obviously I didn't drive all the way out to Drummond Island just to meet Dan, even though I would, and if he called me, I would be up here in a heartbeat, but Dan and his family, they put on this event that's called Jeep End. It's this 50 Jeep, right? Yeah, we 50. cap it at 50. They cap it at 50 Jeeps. They come out here to Drummond Island. It's a very kind of like exclusive feel as far as when you go off-roading. It's a lot of uh, beautiful trails out here that are challenging for, I would say, almost any type of Jeep. You stock. can find a challenge yeah, out here. You can, you can make it pretty challenging out yeah. here. Um, and basically what, what goes on is they have a, a two-ish days. You know, people get here on Friday, kind of camp out, set up, and yeah. then... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we serve uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner on Saturday, and a light breakfast on Sunday. Yeah. And then the guided trails. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as like a Jeeper that knows nothing about this island and they've always wanted to come here, it would be like the, the best way to do it because you show up and 
uh, people are just ready to go with you and have fun as far as you know like-minded people and then obviously you have people like Dan and the trail guides that'll give you the full in-depth tour of the island and that way you're not out here trying to guess where you're going and stuff like that and by the way you're fed the entire time so it's always a good time when you're <laughs> having a full oh, belly yeah. So. Yeah, if you're new to the island or new to off-roading, this you know Jeep is a great way to get into it and see how much your Jeep can actually do. So speaking of what your Jeep can actually do, should we go take this and hit the rock garden? Let's do it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Open. <laughs> I'm glad to redo that. We're off to a great start. Do your seatbelts not work? Nope. Awesome. Right. There's a big old rock pile that just went over. Okay, so for interior-wise, what do we have going on in here? Uh, I got the GPS because I do not have a speedometer whatsoever in this that, dash. The whole dash doesn't even work anymore. That, I did notice that when you were flooring it, there yeah. was nothing happening. We ripped the computer out. Uh, originally, the only thing that worked was the fuel gauge, but now that I'm on the fuel cell in the rear, we got rid of the stock tank, so no more of that. Uh, so GPS is for that. Then I got the GSMR radio because we were just testing this out this year. Um, it Has seemed, it worked? Oh, yeah. I mean, we were getting... I mean, if you're higher up, you're getting probably three or four miles. Um, and we only had three people with them, so as soon as we get all our trail guides with the GSMR, their base stations, uh, it'll be no problem. We'll be able to talk from, you know, our event headquarters to Marblehead, Shell Beach, you name it. Gotcha. Uh, moving over, I got my boost gauge, got my exhaust temp gauge, and I got my oil, oil pressure down below here in the center console. I've got the engine temp. Um, That's a good spot to look for engine temp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, none of it works because we messed up a ground somewhere, and oh. so it's all just you know flickering. But as far as uh, dash, that's about it. Up top, got my starter switch, the switch for the GSMR radio, or sorry, that's the radiator fan. Then the GSMR radio. Okay. And then the CB radio, and then the center is my battery gauge because in the back I got dual batteries with a solenoid, so it charges my starting battery. Only when the key's turned. Okay. It works out good. Uh, yeah, that works out. <laughs> if you ever get stranded, you don't have to worry because that battery that first started never gets used except for starting. And then the other thing that's unique about this Jeep is originally it was an auto and now it's a manual. Way because better. Because of bread truck reasons. Is oh, that yeah. the same shifter out of that truck? No, no. I ordered this one. Oh, okay. I forget where from, but yeah, we had a pretty much rip out this front panel here and then push the transmission forward because that's where it lined up with the engine. Okay. It does, worked. Does know. the AC work? Oh, I That's wish. why we have the windows down and why yeah. I'm sweating There's been a few, yeah. <laughs> There's been a few times, because uh, I used to drive this from Clarkson to Marquette going to school, probably five times a year. Oh. And I would, <laughs> I'd put the inverter in here and run a box fan in the back and blow it at us. Yeah, know? that sounds about right. You do what you got to do, but. Sure. Maybe one day I'll put AC in here again. No, you won't. Probably not. No. Well, Dan. Thanks for showing me your Jeep. Thanks for coming up and visiting me. It's been a while since we've chatted, so. What, what, only like a few weeks? Well, yeah, but I haven't seen you in person I know, in a while. it's been a long time. Anyways, thanks everyone for tuning in. If you wanna see some more about this Jeep, shoot us some messages or uh, comment down below. We'll be happy to answer more questions and possibly shoot some more video on this thing. Uh, for right now, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.